we are finally ready to extend our discussion past spin one half. We've been doing spin one half for a while to learn the tools and techniques and terminology, but really all of this is going to expand to the rest of quantum mechanics. And the first thing to know is that it doesn't have to be a spin one half particle. We have spin one particles. So this is going to be our first expansion. And in fact, spin can be even bigger than one. But right now let's focus on understanding spin one. So we have to label our states differently. For the spin one half, there were two options. We could say up and down. Up meant plus h bar over two, and down meant minus h bar over two. Now if we do an experimental measurement, we can figure out what the spin is. And we in fact see that there are going to be three states. And so one of them, the measurement that we get is positive h bar, another measurement we get is zero, and another measurement we get is negative h bar. So this has three states. So when we write this in matrix notation, we have to actually have three pieces to this. So we're no longer going to be talking about rows and column vectors with two entries. They're going to have three. So all of our operators will actually be a three by three matrix. So it's still square, um, but you might want to go back if you've only learned how to take the determinant in a simple way. Now it's a little more complicated to take the determinant. So let's think about how we're going to name these states. We could say positive, zero, and negative. Um, the way we typically write this is now one, zero, and negative one. And something to be really careful about is that when we write this, we don't mean the zero vector. There is an entry that's non-zero here, the middle one. So remember, this is measuring the spin in the z component. This is a spin one particle. So we're not saying it has zero spin, we're just saying that the spin component in the z direction is zero. So if my z direction is up, and we again now think about that vector which can take up, um, can be any direction in three space, you know, one is, well, one up. Again, and it wouldn't be perfectly all the way up because of what we've learned about the um, uncertainty and that difference between the s squared measurement and sc. So this is, uh, if this is my z direction, spin up is one is like this, spin z of zero is this. It lies entirely in the x and y direction. And then a spin of negative one would be down. So these two states, the up and down, are very analogous to what we had before, but now there's this third option. So three states, three options. We can write this operator based on this in the z basis. So now x and y are gonna be harder, haven't written those measurements down yet, but we can write down what this operator is in its own basis very easily. So we know that an operator in a basis where its basis vectors are the eigenstates is just fully diagonal. And so it's going to be a three by three matrix and the diagonal elements are these eigenvalues. So this is plus h bar, zero, 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 zero. My second diagonal element is zero h bar. Obviously, zero times h bar is the same as zero. It's a little bit helpful to write it this way so that you remember it is an eigenvalue here. It is not just equal to literally zero. And then we have negative h bar. And you could have written this as plus one h bar, negative one h bar, that works too. If you wanted to, to simplify this the most, you can write this as h bar, one, zero, 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 negative one, and that's our operator. But again, it's sometimes helpful to, to really write this explicitly this way, to remember that you can't just like ignore this, something is actually happening there. So this is your introduction to spin one. We now can apply all of the, the things we've learned for spin one half. Um, you still have orthonormality. So if we're working in cats and I have something like this, well, these are different states, so that's zero. So this is one thing, again, to um, really practice with your states is understanding why this inner product is zero. If I have a zero, and again, I, I could pull in that h bar if I wanted to or, or not, if I was getting too confused. What is this? Well, that's equal to one because those are the same state. So remember that orthonormality, you can do this in Braquette notation or you can do it in matrix notation. And again, then x and y will be a little more complicated. Um, but when we're first just working in the z basis, this is your starting point.